Hello. How's everybody doing this week? Uh, so, not too much happening uh, this week, although um, on the weekend I did manage to hit the Ancaster Nostalgia Show because now some of these shows are starting to come back after uh, COVID restrictions have been lifted in many places in Southern Ontario. Uh, although we'll see what happens with the Omnicrom um, virus that sounds a heck of a lot like a transformer or something to me but um yeah I did manage to get a few things um in fact I managed to get one very very rare piece um an antique boxing program that uh we will uh we will look at um but mostly it was uh records a few toys a um, bunch of 1980s concert programs, which are pretty amazing, and a bunch of other stuff. So uh, we'll jump right in. Um, this was actually a walk-in uh, to the store. Um, somebody brought in a collection of records. That's the uh, what's left over. Um, most of it was in really rough shape uh, and pretty much unsellable, uh, with the exception of some really great ones. Um, not super rare, but stuff that I move quite a bit, so I'll just do a quick flip through here. Floyd, April Wine, The Eagles. Like I said, uh, Graham Nash, David Crosby. Nothing super rare, but stuff that I move uh, on a fairly regular basis. Neil Young's Harvest, and everybody knows. Um, so that was kind of a nice pickup, just because it's, it's, you know, especially Christmas, it's the kind of stock that people are looking for to give gifts and such. Um, bought a few others at the show. Now, um, I've noticed that a lot of the record dealers are actually setting up with the nostalgia shows because the record shows haven't been, uh, haven't been opening. Um, and I did manage to find some ones I've been looking for for a while. Uh, and these will almost all probably end up in my collection. Uh, if you're looking for fantastic soundtracks uh the 1970s black cinema soundtracks are some of the best you will ever come across um obviously everybody knows about shaft but uh there was uh oh what was the name of the marvin gay uh, trouble man is one of the greatest uh pieces of soul funk you will ever come across a little harder to track down in, in canada but it's a great one and this is one uh that i had never actually seen before um, but James Brown did uh, Slaughter's, the soundtrack to Slaughter's Big Ripoff, which is a, um, a really good Jim Brown uh, black exploitation film. Uh, black cinema in the 70s was just, you know, at its peak and producing fantastic stuff. And the soundtracks were equally good or great. Um, the Electric Prunes, one of the best psychedelic bands from the 60s. Uh, their big, uh, this is their... Yeah, this is the first record. Maybe the second. I can't remember. Um, but it had I had Too Much to Dream last night, which was the big hit off it. The Great Peanut Butter Conspiracy. Again, another 60s psych piece. This is actually a... Oops, I've got it on the turntable right now. Uh, a harder-to-find mono-pressing. Um, and that there isn't even Canadian mono-pressing listed in Discogs. Just doesn't mean that it doesn't exist or it's super rare, but it just means nobody's put one up. A Belgian copy of uh, Skinny Puppies Dig It. Um, the first puppy single I ever bought was uh, this, the Canadian version of it. I bought it in the store back in the day when it came out and uh, picked up this Belgian copy. Not 100% sure if I'm going to keep that or move it on, but it's it's nice. And then everybody knows, or anybody who knows me knows I'm a pretty big Lou Reed fan. Um, and a uh, huge Velvet Underground fan. And this is a promo interviews and things uh that was given to radio stations to do from the uh the blue mask record um and yeah i love stuff like this i mean it you know i'll probably listen to it once and it'll just sit on the shelf um the nice thing that happened at the show was that uh the the one dealer uh who i got the prunes and a couple of the others off of was having a two for one sale so even though that says 25 bucks um, I also got another $25 record for free, essentially, and uh, it was the same for a bunch of those in there. So it was a good uh, good day for uh, for my personal collection anyways. Um, we'll deal with that at the end because that is the nicest piece here. The other cool thing was a guy had a stack of 1980s tour programs. 
Con people, concert programs, they're a bit of nostalgia, and record collectors love them because they will fit in with your record collection nicely. Um, this is closer to the 90s, I think, 1990s. GNR's uh, Use Your Illusion. There's Bowie's Serious Moonlight Tour. Fun fact, first tour I ever went to was the tour after this, the Glass Spider Tour, which people have said is arguably his worst tour, but it was my first ever concert at Exhibition Stadium in the 80s, and I loved it. I uh, It's still one of my fondest memories. Uh, Queen, The Boss, two U2 Joshua Tree Tour programs, a Jackson's when they did the Victory Tour, Sadly, I think this was the one when they were f filming Michael's hair caught on fire for the Pepsi ad that corresponded with this, but who knows. And then a nice piece of Canadiana, 1980s New Wave Canadiana, Platinum Blonde. Um, they were everything. Actually, think of what Platinum Blonde is. Their first independent release signal, single um, is really punky. Um, and it's hard to find and exceptionally valuable. So if you're digging around and you find uh, not on any major label uh, before the hair got really big. Um, I forget the name of it right now, but again, really great uh, single if you can find it. Um, so as you all know, or some of you know, uh, I collect Canadian insert cards and tobacco cards and things like that. A um, bit of background on that is my parents, when I was a wee lad, um, in the 70s, we went back to England to visit family. And my dad was basically gifted a box of cigarette cards. Now, cigarette cards were cards, that little tiny cards that were inserted into packs um, of cigarettes that started in the 18, basically the 1880s and went right through to the 1950s. And they were sort of the grandfathers of baseball cards, the, the most expensive baseball card. The Honus Wagner was a tobacco card as an example. Um, and we collect primarily Canadian ones. And uh, so that's, uh, you know, what I've been, my parents did it and I've sort of carried on with that. Um, and these were issued by the uh, Imperial Tobacco Company of Canada. Um, they were in coupons that were put in with uh, packs of cigarettes, as well as a silk. And in this case, it was the regimental um, uniforms series, sorry about the glare. And you could save up these slips and send away for two very large premium silks that uh, you could either frame or they were used in sewing projects, sometimes as pillow covers, of uh, Lord Kitchener or General Joffrey, who were the World War One, um, World War, yeah, World War One generals, basically, um, for that led uh, essentially Canada through uh, through most of uh, World War One. Um, and so there's about 10 of those in there. Now, I, again, I, I don't think I paid more than, you know, less than a dollar a piece. And for somebody who collects cards and things like that, you're, you're going to end up, you know, I, I think they're probably worth about 15, 20, maybe even 25 a piece. And I'll sell those on eBay all day long like that. Same kind of thing for this. Um, people overlook things like this. These weren't hidden or anything. They were out for every other dealer there to see and every other you know, buyer to see. They're just insert cards that were given away in serial in the 1980s. Um, various series. Now, these are all sealed. They've never been open. Um, and people love to collect them. These ones are actually 1984 from the, uh, uh, the Victory Tour. Uh, that We just talked about that. From the Jacksons, they put out a series. Here's one that's actually been open. And you can see the stickers there. But I got a bunch that are sealed. There's all kinds of different series in here. Um, you know, scratch tickets, prizes. Here's a, a Hostess hockey one. Uh, Gremlins movie. Some other hockey. Bunch of different stuff. All sealed. And literally, I don't, again, I think it was 20 bucks. There's probably 40, 50 of them there. Um, same thing probably start most of them be in the five to ten dollar range but you know at that price you can't really go wrong so um always keep your eye out for stuff like that the other thing to keep your eye out for especially in the 1980s and 70s are the boxes that these things came in if it mentions them 
um, if there's a picture of the card on the front. Collectors love that stuff because that stuff never got saved. It got thrown out. Um, and that's, you know, for a person who collects, they want, um, most people who collect anyways, they want everything. They want the box that it came in. They want any advertisements that were put out for the series, any sort of more detail. That's what they're looking for. So, um, picked up two of these. Um, I've already got one, but you know, I can't pass them off. Uh, E.T. dolls, mid eighties, right when the movie came out. Um, they're cute as buttons. Look at that. Who doesn't love a good E.T.? We'll put you over there, buddy. You can lean on your friend. Um, and again, speaking to the, uh, the serial ads, um, these are 1950s Star Weekly comics. The comics themselves don't have a lot of value, but what can have value are, hopefully I got the right one, or maybe I didn't. Should probably do some, you know, pre reconnaissance on this. Um, if nothing else, you get to see a cool comic. Look at that flash cord. Look at them. They're just beautiful. Um, no. Of course, you get the Superman at the end. This one has to. I know I've got a couple that got ads. And basically, they will have ads for premiums. Uh, that were given away in comics and the like. There is one. Uh, this model plane was given away in Pep's, uh, Kellogg's Pep Flakes. Um, I have another where they mention um, a series of bird cards that were given away. I won't go into it, but they're in there. Those ads sell for upwards of $25 to $50, depending on what the series is. Some of the hockey ones can sell for up to $100. Um, so they're always worth going through because again um usually these are sold well less you know usually a couple of bucks a piece um and if i i hate to cut ads out but in that case i will because the reality is the comics aren't um, valued unfortunately uh, maybe you could cut them out afterwards and frame them somebody might buy them that way because the superman ones in the back are great and they're just beautiful graphics um but yeah, the ads are where the money is at on those, especially for card collectors type thing. And then I got a stack of Victorian, mostly Victorian trade cards, some of them going into the Edwardian era and, and into the 30s. But uh, these are 1950s pair of these. I picked those up just, um, they're Coke. I believe they're 1950s. Little Coke coasters. Um, this one giving you lessons as to why and how to drink um, from straight from a bottle uh because i guess that might people didn't know how to do that back then i don't know uh victorian trade cards these were all 1890s generally i look for graphic ones this one's an anvil so uh anybody who's into blacksmithing will be into this here's another one that's got a smithy on it um they were used they were basically advertisements for various businesses this one i picked up the front of it's not that interesting but the back is from Guelph, Ontario, uh, a cigar and tobacco distributor. Um, usually anything that is uh, tobacco related, especially cigars uh, and small town, smaller towns, uh, they're worth picking up. This one, uh, again, will go up on eBay. Uh, Diadem cigarettes, yeah, I probably should have left that one behind. It's a little bit, a little bit rough, but you know, you can't really go on. This was in the lot. It actually uh, shows uh, what I believe is probably a 20s, 1920s automobile that clearly has been in an accident. Uh, it's actually just a photo. Um, and there is a Lakeview Garage Auto Library, which, um, yeah, that, I guess they called them that. That's still a hangover from the car, uh, from the uh, horse and cart age. Um, and you can sometimes find out where this is from by getting some magnification right down here on the um, license plate. I'll have to hit that with a with a magnifying glass and study it because if you can find a specific state that it's sold from, uh, people are always interested in things like that. So that's what. And then this one, which I'm uh, probably overpaid a bit for because it's only the cover. If this had been the whole thing, it would have been a steal, but. It's just the cover, but it's the Toronto Maple Leafs Baseball Club. We're a part of the International League. 
Uh, this is a program from 1934. It's just the cover. My favorite thing about this at the bottom is here, free tickets and cigarettes at every game. <laughs> Can you imagine now if they were handing out free smokes? It'd be great. Um, I don't smoke, so just saying. This is the best thing of the day, uh, by far. And again, it's the kind of thing that was overlooked by tons of people. And also, the dealer himself sort of dealt in antiques. Um, I'm going to get it out here, or try to, um, just to get the glare off it. So, collecting tobacco cards. Um, some of the many subjects that are covered in the early 1800 ones, uh, sorry, uh, 1890s ones, 1880s, 1890s, are uh, pugilists or boxers. Lots of different things on there. So I kind of know, just through that collecting process, quite a bit about early boxing history. And uh, one of the, uh, he was, I think it was 1890s, he was the only guy who ever beat John L. Sullivan, who was considered one of the greatest heavyweight champions ever, um, was Gentleman James or Gentleman Jim Corbett. Um, and in the late 18, I think 1890s, he defeated and took the heavyweight title from uh, John L. Sullivan. Uh, he's also in some circles considered the uh, great-grandfather of um, sort of the modern boxing training. He, he trained. Um, a lot of the bare-knuckle boxers back in the day were just bruisers, big men. They drank, they lived hard, um, but he trained. Uh, he had a regiment that he went through, and, and many of them are apparently still used to this day. Um, so this was a sparring ex exhibition. Um, after he, re you know, retired from professional boxing, uh, he actually went into theater, um, and he also would do these uh, tours to make money. Um, and this is a sparring exhibition, and it has 1904 written on the top of it, Empire Theater. Um, you know, that probably is the, the year it came out, but what's great about it is that it's Halifax, Nova Scotia, in Canada. So he must have done a tour of Canada, which would make sense, um, afterwards doing these exhibitions. This is just exceptionally rare. Um, you can see all the different businesses from the area. Um, and yeah, there's a ton of stuff there. And it gives a bit of history about him on there. It's in a little rougher shape, but there's other guys on. Jimmy Duran, these are probably local fighters. Um, and then there's the American Club Swinger, uh, which champion club swinger, which, you know, it's, it sounds like something not sport related um but actually club swinging was uh a sport in itself but just google it i don't you know we could be here for days talking about that um but such a rare piece all the halifax ads and then at the bottom it said uh, is it a james corbett will be in a four round sparring expedition and then the music program from the band and again, oh, and there you go. So he, here's probably why it's 1904. So um, there are over 100 million bottles of Budweiser sold in 1903. Um, you know, mentioned things about the, uh, the brewers, the great attraction of the World's Fair City. Um, and uh, it mentions distributors in Halifax there. I mean, 100 million bottles. I mean... Uh, we probably went through that on my first year of university, back when I did the vibe a bit. Um, but yeah, that is a spectacular piece. Like, that is a kind of, you, you come across these maybe once in your life. And um, it was not expensive at all. Again, completely baffled as to why it was there. The dealer dealt in antiques, they, but they just clearly didn't do the research on this or, or just didn't know if you don't know the early boxing history then yeah this would have just been something you you know might not have known anything about but anybody who collects boxing stuff knows it's rare i i've never seen another i've done uh i've been doing 
researched for the past, uh, you know, 48 hours and I can't find another program, um, like it. Uh, so yeah, rare piece of paper. It's what, 116 years old ish. Um, rare survivor. And there wouldn't have been too many of them printed, right? Because it, it's, I don't think it would have been a huge draw um, because Halifax didn't have that many people. Um, but still, great piece. Oh, and one other thing. Uh, Christmas catalogs. I didn't pay $15 for this, trust me. Um, there were two Christmas catalogs. I've told you guys, especially in the 70s, 80s, and even the 90s, the Christmas ones are gold because of, let's see if I can find it here. There's the girl. Yeah, toys. Stuff like this. There's all your G.I. Joes for the year, the big 12 inches. There's your Big Jim. Oh, look at that. There's the Big Jim camper. Wait, wait, where is it? Boom, right there. Look at that. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, there's all kinds of things like Barbies in here and tons of. There's more boy toys. I think if you go along there. Oh, yeah, there's the Migos, Evil Knievel, the Bionic Man. Um, those Star Trek Migos are gold. Yeah, all the robots and all kinds of stuff. Toy collectors love this stuff um, because they get to see the toys, um, you know, all set up, well photographed. And there's tons of other things in here, musical instruments. I'm sure there's probably some guitars and stuff in there from back in the day. And it's just a cool little vintage uh, piece. These are worth picking up. Um, and they do sell fairly well on eBay. So like I said, if you happen to be at like a house clearance and you see somebody throwing these things out, just grab them because it's, it's you know, free money essentially if somebody's giving them away, grab them up. So uh, that's it for this week. Um, hey, you know what? My subscriptions, uh, subscribers has gone up quite a bit, much the d delight of my son. Um, he's very proud of dad's subs. Uh, so yeah, I want to say thank you all for subscribing. And if you haven't, uh, you know, if uh, you like this kind of stuff, please hit that subscribe button. Um, bring a smile to a little boy's face. He gets very excited. Um, his, you know, his big subscribers are like heroes or like Mr. Beast and, um, Dan DMT and guys like that who have millions and millions. Um, but, uh, he thinks it's pretty, pretty cool that daddy has a few. So yeah, um, not to guilt you into subscribing, but uh, if that works, I'll take it. All right, I hope you guys uh, found uh, this a little bit educational. Maybe you can keep your eye out uh, when garage sales seasons hit next year. And um, yeah, leave any comments uh, in the uh, comments section there. I'll try to respond as best I can. And uh, yeah, I hope you all have a good week and are able to find a few really special treasures. Bye.